Oh, good morning. And here we are. This is St. Mary's Church in Enville. Beautiful, beautiful church. The uh, flag of St. George flying atop her. Yeah, stunning church. But I haven't brought you here to look at churches. I brought you here to have a look at the new addition to my collection of motorbikes. Yes, I went and did it. I've got myself a Royal Enfield Himalayan Scram 411. And this is its first ride out. I did it a couple of weeks, uh, but been a little bit busy doing stuff around the house and with work. That's the first opportunity that I've had to to get out on the bike. So this is a maiden voyage. So, uh, yeah, left the house this morning with three miles on her, on him. And uh, where are we now? We're at 19.9 uh, miles. So she's done, I've done 17 miles on her so far. And we're off to try and get as many miles as we can today in order for me to get him uh, up to first service and running so it's a very uh, sedate maximum speed of 40 miles an hour today uh, one of the things you may or may not have noticed already is that i've changed the end can and we're now already got ourselves a royal enfield precision so uh, first ride out i hope you're gonna join me for the rest of the day and see where it takes us and uh, the next uh, time you'll see us, we'll be uh, on the road and heading off somewhere to get some miles on this machine. So there he is, we'll have a look at him a bit later. Right. Let's go, shall we? On the site, St Mary's Church, Enville. Beautiful church. Let's go and uh, see what we can find. See where the uh, the roads take us today. Yeah, so that's uh, just about how I came by this bike. As I say, I've uh, got me in, sort of in the uh, market for a scram. Was the one went to. Uh, Scotland last year and did all of our Golden Butte with uh, Paul. Paul's got a uh, BMW R9 T Scrambler. Beautiful bike. And I went on the uh, Royal Enfield Interceptor. Now that was all well and good, but the Interceptor, we, we, we started to try and look for a lot of sort of uh, off the beaten track roads and back roads and B roads and sort of tr semi trails and stuff like that and the uh, it ended up with the um, I know Phil did it and he did it well the Interceptor but it's uh, not really the, the ideal sort of bike and we started doing some evening rides out as well quite local ones and we were you know again going around the B roads around where we live and uh, I thought I need a bike that's more suited to this, and uh, I didn't want uh, the ex you know the sort of cost of uh, something like Paul's BMW. So I thought, oh no, and the Scram had come out by then, and uh, I started to have a look at a few videos of the Scram, and I, I just really loved it, really loved it, the look of it and everything, and the, I didn't see a single bad review of it. So on that basis. Uh, I started to uh, think about getting one and uh, December last year, December 17th I think it was, I went to QB Motorcycles down in uh, Crawley Bank near Crawley Hill and uh, put a deposit down on this baby and I wanted the white one, I think it's the flame, white flame I think it's called and I wanted this colour so I hadn't got one in stock so I had to wait and then it arrived um, just after Christmas then sort of uh, Second week, first second week of January, 
and it was delivered. So I've been sort of uh, waiting to find a suitable time to go out and have a, have a play with it and start to run it in and today is that day, the 4th of February and the, uh, the running in process has now begun. So it's all fun and games because the running in process to get up to your first service is uh, 40 miles, and don't exceed 40 miles an hour for 300 miles up to the first service and uh, what I have found with it is it's it's uh, it's got plenty of uh, it wants to get up to 40 and it gets there quite easily and it sits there quite comfortably so uh, I'm happy to keep a, an eye on the speedo to make sure that I'm not inadvertently exceeding it so that's what today's all about today's all about us going out and uh, trying to get as many miles onto it as I can in order to get that first service underway and uh, then I can take it up to 50 miles an hour then up to I think it's 1250 miles or something like that so um, and it's just going to be perfect for what we now do the types of roads we now hunt down search for and ride um, it's just going to be perfect for that and you know I've done uh, 19 miles on it and it's it's lovely it's absolutely lovely it's uh it poodles along with ease it's comfortable it's a nice riding position it's still too flaming tall for me that's because i'm my uh, 29 inch inseam is uh, an absolute pain in the ass for every bike that i've owned since uh the very early days where the bikes are much smaller and lower um, yeah but I've struggled on every single bike I thought this was going to be slightly easier but it's not my 29 inches uh, screws me up every single time but uh, hey ho it is what it is I, um, I'm used to dealing with it it's not like my Tiger Explorer 1200 that was uh, that was fun for a short ass like me so as I try to keep it down to 40 miles an hour you see it just, um, it just sits at it, it's effortless yeah so um, if you're looking at reviews, there's absolutely loads of reviews all over uh, YouTube but the ones that sort of really sold it finally for me were the, uh, as I mentioned earlier the all year motorcyclist uh, took a new, brand new one out I think he got 13 miles on it when he took it out and demonstrated how lovely it is and you know gave a real honest but really positive review of it so that was um, uh, useful in helping to make the decision uh, and Derek at uh, Solo Motor UK Derek did a uh, well he owns one and he's been doing modifications to it and, uh, and again it's uh, it's pretty much all positive with it. It's got a bit of problem with the spokes at the moment, but I think that's getting dealt with. The spokes are corroded. I think that's getting dealt with. So Derek's uh, uh, solo motor UK is uh, he's another one that's given me sort of an inspiration to want to get it. And this is a, you see what's happening here. I'm rolling down here, I'm trying to keep it down. It just wants to go. So. So this is a 60 mile an hour road and uh, I'm holding all the flaming traffic up. There they go, there they go. Excellent. So, um, yeah, today is to go out and sort of break it, run it in, uh, get there some wear on the tyres, try and get as many miles as I, as I can. I'll try and visit somewhere nice in the process. And uh, just really get used to it and then get that service in. So yeah, um, another one who, uh, another uh, YouTube vlogger that uh, had gave me an interest was uh, Peak Motorcycles, Andre of Peak Motorcycles. He's, uh, he did a nice review of when he picks his up, and uh, it's, it's just great. It's perfect. So uh, yeah, not so good here because I'm uh, I'm doing the thing that really winds me up with other motorists. I'm holding everybody up. So, but uh, that's it compost perfect
Yeah, so uh, this will be the bike that I'll be doing the uh, the tour of Isle of Sky with, with Paul. So, uh, now Paul, Paul has said, because there, there are two Pauls in our, in our group, uh, there's Big Paul uh, and Little Paul. And uh, when I talk about him, I say, well, Big Paul said, well, you don't know, we don't know which one you're talking about. So I'm going to put some pictures on the screen of uh, Big Paul so that you can get to know what Big Paul looks like and who he is. And, uh, <coughs> and Little Paul. So in terms of the Isle of Sky tour, I'm going there with Big Paul. And uh, Switzerland, uh, going there with Little Paul. So uh, hopefully that's helped uh, to uh, clarify who the two Pauls are when I, when I talk about them. Just got to remember to use the term little and big, little and large, BP and LP. So um, yeah. So that's what's going on uh, at the moment. I say today. I don't even know where I'm going. I'm just uh, freestyling it really. Uh, I planned a few routes, but I just thought it's not. It's one of them where it's just going to go where the mood takes me, and if I find somewhere interesting along the way, all well and good. If I don't, I'll tough. <laughs> it's all about the the riding and getting the miles in today. Um, yeah, so back to the scrum riding position, perfect. No issues with it whatsoever. It's fact, it's very comfortable. I. Uh, it, not really, you know, I'm quite close to the handlebars. It's not a big distance between the seating position and the handlebars. And as I say, I'm quite a short, uh, short arse, so they're very comfortable. Um, height wise, yeah, always a problem. Height wise, bikes are for me, just something I have to live with and deal with, really. Um, could get them lowered, but that's the point really, you're taking away the uh, the ground clearance, so I don't want to be doing things like that, I'm just going to live with it as I've always had to. Um, yeah, the, the difficulty now is going to be getting out enough to put the necessary miles on this bike, uh, being conscious that um, I need to have got it beyond 1250 by the time we go to... Uh, to the Isle of Sky. I think I'll be alright, but it might mean that I'll be out a bit less on the others, but that's that's fine, keeps them all down on them, doesn't it? So, I want to get the, uh, the first service in by the uh, the end of February. There'll be a little bit more leeway to, 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 to go up to 50 miles an hour, just to get the rest of those uh, running miles on. So, as I say, let's see where we end up today. Uh, and I'll drop on and off as we uh, as we work through the day and tell you more about my experience of uh, my initial ride out on the uh, Scrum 411. Oh, welcome back. And we've been out together now for coming up to 50 miles. And I absolutely love it. Uh, it 40 miles an hour is where it runs along as sweet as a nut at 40 miles an hour. The problem with 40 miles an hour is I struggle to keep it at 40 miles an hour. I have to, without realising, it got a little bit above it a couple of times, but not, not for very long, just for a very short duration. Uh, but in terms of uh, sitting comfortably at it, it just wafts along. That's the word to describe how this bike uh, performs, it wafts along. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It, uh, it's, a, it's a lovely experience. It's the best way I can describe it. A lovely experience. It's, it's, it's just sedate. It's relaxed, it's sedate. Uh, I'm, okay, I know it's got sufficient power, if necessary, to, you know, to give you a little bit of fun. But I'm having fun just doing this at 40 miles an hour. It's just lovely. Uh, 
and it's just effortless absolutely effortless fifth gear it'll still pull although it, so you can tell that really is just an overdrive gear it just pulls in all gears really it's uh it's a it's a, it's a joy to ride i'm uh, i'm over the moon with it i've only done you know coming up to 50 miles on it without heading towards lentwardine now the home of the late great john chalice um of only fools and horses fame boise he lived at uh, lentwardine a wonderful actor a great character so i'm going to uh, be passing through lentwardine shortly and then uh, up to knighton we're going to have a mooch around Radnor, I think, and then head back. Um, try for 150 miles on it today if I can. But it's just lovely. I'm just over the moon with it. As I say, just got to keep an eye on myself, really, to just keep it at that ticking along at 40. And uh, what to say? The colour, love it. Um, the riding position, perfect. Uh, Power, don't know yet, but what I have been doing, more than adequate for anything that I'm ever going to need it for, in terms of uh, having a bit of fun around back lanes, really, and away from the uh, the main drags. Uh, I think it'll be awesome to take up to the Isle of Sky and do those sorts of roads. It's, it, I think it'll be, it's made for those sorts of roads, I think. Um, I must love you. Right. In terms of names for bikes, um, I've never really named my bikes before, but there seems to be uh, a lot of people name their bikes now, so I think I should name this bike, and I think I'm going to name my other bikes as well. So, let's start with my other bikes. We, uh, we trace a 9 GT. Now, I think that... Uh, that that, uh, that that bike is a is a lady uh, if you look at the one-eyed headlights uh, you, she's winking at you so uh, she's a lady and because she's a tracer her name is now going to be Tracy so Tracy the tracer and then we've got uh, my Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 now now I think uh, we're going to define her or him as non-binary so that's going to be a non-binary motorcycle we've got to keep it with the fashion and the fans so I'm going to call the Royal Enfield Interceptor Eddie so uh, I'm calling her him Eddie it could be Eddie as in Edward or Edwina uh -huh. so there you go so that bike, I uh, I get a feel that it's uh, it's non-binary. It, it likes to it's, it's it's got some sort of feminine traits uh, whilst having lots of masculine traits. So we'll uh, we'll call uh, we'll call Eddie Eddie the Interceptor. We'll uh, non-binary. And then we, uh, as, as I say, we're keeping with the uh, keeping down with the kids and the fashion as well. Then now this one, the Scram 411. Now, the all-year motorcyclist has suggested that if uh, if you have one of these you should call it uh, Scamp Scamp the Scram yeah and I thought about that and I, it's nice Scamp but uh, I'm a sort of more mature uh, person and I think that uh, this bike for having a mature owner or an older owner Scamp's not the name for me so this bike is going to be known henceforth as Stanley shortened to Stan Stan the Scram so this is uh, this is introducing everybody to Stan uh, and that's a little bit of a, uh, a nod towards the all year motorcyclist not quite Scamp but it's got a nice round masculine blokey name Stan Stan the Scram so therefore they, there's my little stable of motorcycles the very feminine Tracy, the Tracer the uh, gender non-specific non-binary uh, Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, Eddie some days it'll be Eddie other days it'll be Edwina uh, Edwin, 
Edwin. So yeah, sometimes Edwin when it's uh, when it's in boy mode, and it'll be Edwin uh, when it's in girl mode. But every now and generally is Eddie. Oh, this is a lovely road. Uh, and then Stan, Stan the Scram. So I think I've covered all bases there. Uh, I shouldn't get any hate mail from uh, from uh, people saying that uh, I'm uh, misgendering my motorcycles, but there you go. <laughs> what a mad world we live in. But uh, yeah, so that's my three bikes. Uh, they're new ADSs. But, well, this is awesome. I, don't, I, don't, I must have been here down this road before. I don't recall, I don't recall it. This is lovely. So, um, yeah, see where I've got to keep my eye that I'm not exceeding uh, 40 miles an hour. I'm oh, sorry about the queue of traffic behind. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm having a day with Stan today. We're getting to know each other. Dave and Stan, jolly boys out here. I think that was a red kite. Not sure, I'm terrible on birds. Um, yeah. Dave and Stan. So uh, yeah, there you go, a little bit of fun there. Um, I went up to 54 miles. Uh, this is just wonderful, it's so sedate. Coming into Lent for Diner. It's sedate, it's relaxing, it doesn't feel like it's going to get you into any trouble. Um, I, I love you, I love you. That's the sort of roads that I'm going to be going down. But yeah, so um, yeah, 150 miles today. Looking around some lovely countryside now. Probably going to put the 360 camera on a little bit later. Oops, naughty. Just to uh, capture some different sorts of angles and have a bit of fun with the uh, with, with the camera. Oof, lent with dying surgery. So, a lovely look at that, that's beautiful. What a lovely place to live. Right, yeah, I've sported a new helmet today as well. Sam bought me a, uh, an Arthur, a HJC Arthur 70 for Christmas. A uh, little bit tight around the ears, I think I've, because uh, I've fitted the cardo onto it and I've use the spacers to push the speakers out a bit for and I might have pushed them a bit too far, I might have set, set them back because I'm finding it's a bit uncomfortable and a bit of a squeeze on my ears at the moment uh, but hey ho, yeah so this is Lampadine isn't this lovely so the Shropshire Hills were in there beautiful across the river. Look at that. Wonderful. Isn't that lovely? Uh, I think we'll probably cross the Welsh border today to God's country. I don't know if they can hear the engine note uh, and the, uh, the slightly more throaty sound that you get from the uh, the Enfield Precision NCAD. Uh, but uh, from where I'm sat, it sounds bloody lovely. There's some bikes here. A lot of bigger bikes. The boys are out. It's just, it's just lovely. Perfect. And so once I can. Uh, so I can open it up a bit more. I think it's going to be going to be awesome, really. I love this part of the world, the Shropshire Hills. It's very nice over here. Perfect for what I'm doing today. Yeah, definitely got to do something with that. It's bloody tight in me. Definitely hurting my ears. Probably left here in particular, so I'll push that back a bit. Walford. Uh, 
So I see you know, you've probably noticed I've got the bee line on, but I'm not using the bee line just for a route, I'm just using it to record the route I'm doing. Hereford, Lempster, Wigmore. This is a nice route if you go to the Eden Valley to come down here. Lincoln and Prestate. So we get to Nitre and decide where we're going to go from Nitre. Started stopping and taking, if I see any nice churches or chapels, I started pulling over and getting pictures of the bike outside these churches and chapels. There's a couple I'll put up on this video. And, uh, it's quite nice. I like, I like pictures of motorbikes outside churches. Especially churches with your chapels with character. Come on, my son. Well, no, he's all right, he's waiting. Go on. Yeah, it's not nice when you're uh, holding people up. It's one of those things you've got to do, but you don't want to do it. So uh, I have got a uh, Ford Focus up my ass at the moment. Hopefully he's going to go now. Where are we going to go? Uh, no. Go on, you got bags of room. There you go. Yep, sorry. I get it. I was saying, just poodles along beautifully. Poodles along beautifully. There's a bit of a fire in the woods over there. Probably somebody's wood burning stove. Where are we? Brampton Brian. Oh, it's lovely. There's a lovely hedge here. Here it is on the right hand side. Look at that. It's beautiful. Love that. Medieval or Elizabethan. That's, that's, that's the sort of thoughts it stirs up with me. Beautiful. I remember seeing that, first seeing that hedge in 1983-84 when I used to come down to the Eden Valley with my cousin Phil on the bikes camping and uh, I always remember passing that beautiful sight to see. 58 miles now. Uh, what I'll do, I'll wrap up a little bit again and catch up with you in a little bit further into the journey.